Hello everyone and welcome back to Still Life, this time for part 3, and hopefully this time to crack the code. Now, I've already done this twice off-air, let's say, you know, pre-recording, and um, yeah, I, I just messed around with it for about two or three minutes and I eventually came up with the combination that was, just as I thought, uh, from the necklace, I think, was it diamond, diamond, let's see, yeah, diamond, diamond, heart, diamond, diamond, and uh, yeah, once you find that combination, you press the button in the middle, and instead of resetting it, it starts a cutscene, which I alt and f forward because I didn't want to spoil myself. <laughs> but uh, hopefully that's not going to happen this time. Now, what you need to do, essentially, is you need to uh, sort out the left and the right one, and then you need to work out the three in the middle. That's how I've worked it out anyway. There might be a, a better way of doing it, but I'm going to see if I can sort of replicate what I did again. Here we go. Right. Now, I think if I just spin this again... There we go! Right, okay. <laughs> now, let's not press Alt and F4. Two years had passed since the strange case in Paris. I figured I'd best leave town and come here, quieter or so I thought. The case in Paris had stirred my passion for PI work again. I had to let go of my dream of being an artist. It wasn't bringing in as much dough as being a private dick. In all, there were five dead and two unaccounted for. So far, all the victims were prostitutes. I didn't know if I would take the case. To my surprise, this cop Skalnik had no beef about me snooping around his crime scene. Right. Bit of a flashback then. Uh, are we playing as Gustav then? The character from Post Mortem? I mean, that's not him. Ah, that's him, though. It's very nice of you to let me have a peek. I'm Gustav McPherson. I'm a... Yes, a private detective. I'm familiar with your work, Mr. McPherson. I had no idea I was so popular. <laughs> I've read about your case in Paris, and the one in London. I'm Inspector Skalnik of the Prague Police. Good for you. Is this the fifth victim? Yes, she is officially. Supposedly, there are two missing. Supposedly? Hmm. Yes, well, you know these women. They come and go, often without telling anyone. And then they show up again like they never left. So I don't bother with disappearances. Great police work. So you only bother when they turn up like this? I see. We have a knight in shining armor. If you want my advice, Mr. McPherson, you'd best return to the usual missing person cases or husband cheating mysteries. This is a waste of your time. I think you've just convinced me to take the case. Hmm. Really? Just to spite you. The press will not even cover this story. No one wants to know about dead prostitutes. If they do write about it, it will be about the killer and the number of bodies and not the actual victims. The pimps care even less. They force their women to work even if there is a killer loose. No one wants to sit at a dinner table and talk about this. There is no glory in this case. Like I said, you should stick with what you know. I don't like this guy. Do you mind if I ask you a few more questions? Not at all. Were all the victims prostitutes? Yes. Okay, anything else? Is the cause of death the necklace on her neck? Of course it is. Wait, of, of course it is? So it's not the multiple stab wounds to her chest? No, well, we aren't really sure. Well, you sounded sure a minute ago. Does she have any other significant wounds on her body? Yes. She has scars on her forearms, and she is eviscerated. Eviscerated? Hmm. Okay. I had never seen anything so horrible in my entire life. I'd only heard of horrors like this from the Ripper case in London. Oh my god. Were all the victims like this? Yes, they were all found like this. Are all the organs accounted for? 
I'm no doctor, Mr. McPherson. I have no idea. In the other cases, were there missing organs? Not that I'm aware of. Hmm. Who's the coroner? Emil Corona. He works at the old chapel. He's very... Well, I don't want to ruin the surprise. Oh, I'm already looking forward to it. <laughs> now it's your turn to share. Maybe you can tell me what you think happened. I think you're right about the cause of death. That slash across the neck was definitely it. The stabbings to her chest were done before the final blow to the throat. The defensive stab wounds on her arms reinforced this theory. What's bothering me, though, is the lack of blood at the crime scene. This probably indicates that she was murdered somewhere else, not here. He's good. Well, <laughs> Mr. McPherson, I don't want to be rude, but... You have work to do, uh, of course. Thanks for sharing. It was nice meeting you. It was nice meeting you, too. I had a feeling that the cooperation between Skalnik and me had just ended. Yeah. He was testing me for some reason. I was left to fend for myself. Okay. Well, let's do just that. Let's fend for myself, and uh, hopefully he's not the next body I find. Or maybe not. I'd better leave the inspector to himself. Okay, fair enough. Uh, right. Can we go any further this way? I guess not. Can we have a look at the body again? No. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, this way it is then, I suppose. So, Prague. Alright, a little bit different than uh, modern-day Chicago. Who's this? Kazimir Stasek. Okay. He's been a good source of info on a couple of minor cases I had here in the city. Hello, my friend. Ah, Mr. McPherson. And how are you this dark evening? I can't complain. And how's my favorite boy in blue? Besides my eye and this horrible murder, everything's fine. Y your eye? I imagine you don't have anything more to give me? This time I'm afraid I have nothing for you, my friend. Everyone is more or less at a loss. You don't mind if I ask you a couple of questions anyway? Of course not. Why did you do it? How long has this been going on? It started about three weeks ago. You didn't hear about it until now? No, I wasn't in town. I just got back. I was working a case outside the city. Someone called me to see if I could come back and help. Ah, the very beautiful Miss Ida Skalikova, I presume? Good guess. She's worried for her friends. I told her I'd see what I could do. All right. Can you tell me about your new boss? Inspector Yuri Skalnik. He was given the case and got temporarily assigned to this district. He has a good reputation, but he doesn't share much information with us. He keeps to himself a lot. What? He doesn't trust you? Honestly, I don't know. Maybe he thinks we're incompetent or something. Maybe. But he'd be stupid to think so. Why, thank you, my friend. Maybe he just wants all the glory for himself. Were all the victims' bodies dumped? Yeah, I believe so. But then again, I don't have much information, as I said earlier. Hmm. Okay. Let's keep going. Was there ever an eyewitness? Nope. Never. That's what bothered me the most. How was the killer getting around the city without being seen? That is a good question. Right. Something unrelated to the case, it seems. How'd you get the Shiner? Uh. Shiner? Your black eye. How'd you get it? Oh, uh, I arrested a man last night, and for some reason my eye hit this man's very large fist. <laughs> Did you get sucker punched? Well, a little. My partner didn't have time to warn me. Everything happened so fast. I was helping the woman, and I turned around to see if my partner was okay, and wham! Next thing I knew, I was flat-faced on the sidewalk. And what did the man do to deserve your undivided attention? <laughs> he was harassing a young woman. So I asked him to stop, and then things got out of hand. The police are trying to find this animal. We're a little nervous when a man harasses a young woman these days. That's understandable. Well, I should leave you to your work, and I have to see my client. Thanks for your input. You're welcome. Be careful. Will do. No promises, but I will try. Yes, um, okay. Right, uh, let's have a look at our inventory. Have we got, like, another... <laughs> we've got an, we've got our own little sort of journal and inventory system. We're not carrying anything, apparently, though. Uh, and we haven't written anything down? I guess not. Okay, so we get the, uh, the chapter two prologue thing. Okay, I'll just give you a brief look at this, just in case you want to read up on what I'm playing. Might give you a bit of backstory, actually, to the game I 
neglected to play post-mortem, I'm not sure. Skalnik, yeah. Maybe it wouldn't be all that bad if I did see his body wrapped up in cloth. And that's just that. Okay, right, well let's continue going, shall we? I think I can see someone over there. Can we run? Yes, we can run. We're not carrying coffee. <laughs> ah, there we go. Next to the mill. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. There could be some, you know, vital clues and evidence and stuff around this area. Uh, do you want to go that way or not? Oh, I see. It's another screen, is it? My Ida. Ah. The best gams in all of Eastern Europe. <laughs> gams? She's my angel and the love of my life. I met her on a small case I was working. She used to dance in the neighborhood cabaret. She was involved with the married man I was following. It was love at first sight. Hey, look at you all dolled up. Hi, sweetheart. I don't like it when you call me that. <laughs> I didn't call you a doll. I said that you were... Never mind, I'm sorry. Good. Now have you talked to that useless inspector? Unfortunately, yes. I yes. Have, and I didn't get much from the meeting. Are you going to help us? Of course I will. Was there really any doubt? No, but you never know. <laughs> Just occasionally there's something that reminds you that, yes, this is a Canadian voice actor. When do you want to settle this? Now or later? No, I don't want money, Ida. Nonsense. You will accept our money. How much do you charge? Okay, listen. We'll settle this after the case, alright? Do you promise? Because we'll feel insulted if you don't accept our money. What was I supposed to do? Take money off these women? That's the last thing I wanted to do. Yes, I promise. I will charge you at the end of the case. Yeah, right. He has a heart of gold, this man, apparently. What was her name? Who? The victim's name? Oh, her name was Francisca. Francisca, okay. Were you close to her? Not as much as Milena, but yes, I knew her. Did she ever talk about a regular client or someone special? Not that I know of. Do you think Milena can answer a few questions? I guess. Let me ask her. That's Milena? her there, is it? Right. Yes? This is my friend, the one I told you about. He's here to help us catch the man responsible. Do you think he can ask you some questions about Francisca? Okay. I'll wait for you up the stairs, okay? Okay. I'll see you in a bit. Hmm, alright. Who's the guy up there by the railings? Is he a driver or something? It, right. Hello, Milena. My name is Gus McPherson. I don't I'm know. I'm here to help stop this from ever happening again. I thank you, sir. Not a lot of people would help women like us. Apparently not. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about Francisca? No, that's fine. Alright, let's start. How long have you known Francisca? Well, I've known her for a long time. We met in the orphanage when we were just little girls. Her uh, parents had died in a terrible accident. We became very close. We both left the orphanage never to return. We never liked the sisters. Ever since we left, we tried to survive on the streets, even changing cities. But we kept coming back here. Bet you're regretting that now. Did she ever talk about someone new or special? No. It was not her style. Francisca would rarely take new clients. She had regulars and enough to allow her to survive. She would only take complete strangers if she absolutely needed to. Apollina is more like that. She always has a new rich client. And who is Apollina? Did she ever have a client that had been violent with her? No. She only had clients she trusted. Okay. How about you? Have you had any trouble with any of your clients? No, I'm like Francisca. I have only regular clients. If I'm on the streets, it's because I'm keeping my friends company. Hmm. All right. Were you close to any of the other victims? Well, there is one that was a common friend to Francisca and me. Her name was Anezka. No one's found her. She just disappeared one day. Uh-oh. We honestly don't know what happened to her. And I knew the others only on a professional level. 
Yeah, I, I suppose. Did Aneska ever complain about any clients before she disappeared? Or did she ever talk about leaving? Well, we all talk about leaving. Who wants to live their life like this? But she never complained about anything. Aneska was like Apollina. She took on many clients. She left town a lot, but always came back with a broken heart. I hope she did find someone and left this place. Where can I find this Apollina? Hmm. She usually works the park. Rare are the girls who are allowed to enter it. She's very protective of her territory. <laughs> That's what she calls it anyway. Francisca and me were allowed in because Apollina knew we didn't take strangers and pretty much had our own regulars. Anezka was Apollina's good friend, so she was allowed to. So we all kept each other company in the park. Maybe Apollina knows where Anezka is. I don't know. Well, thank you for answering my questions. It was a pleasure to meet you, even under these unfortunate circumstances. Well, it was nice to meet you, Mr. McPherson. I thank you for trying to help us. Trying? I haven't even started yet. If I have any more questions, how may I contact you? Usually in the park. Again, thank you. All right. I guess this is a location we could we could go to if needed, right? Okay, something else added to the journal. Uh, yeah. Right, uh, is, is there anything else to do here? Apart from talk? I don't suppose we really want to talk again, do we? Probably not. No, let's, uh, let's, let's go up here and, and see what we can do. Ida's an angel on Earth. She's the sweetest person I've ever met. I truly believe she doesn't have an angry bone in her body, even with the difficult childhood she had. A stepfather who molested her on a regular basis. Ida is always positive, and she's always willing to help the people who surround her. That's why she hired me to try and help. She has an undying optimism about life in general, and I love her for it. Hey. How is she? She's okay, I guess, under the circumstances. I'll go talk to her after. Alright. Tell me, where can I find Emil Corona? Who's he? Coroner, right? He's the right? coroner right. in the case. I need to ask him a few questions. Skalnik said he worked in an old chapel. Do you know where it is? Yes, I'll mark it on a map. I don't need a map. Just tell me where it is. <laughs> what is it with men in directions? Take this map, it'll help you. We just want to figure shit out on our own. <laughs> I, I think that's the, the gist of it. I the of the old chapel. It's not far from here. Okay. Thanks, sweetheart. Yeah, it's like a personal challenge and we don't want any help. And, um, right. How have you been? I mean, are you feeling better? Yes, a little. It's not as bad as when you left for your case. Did you go see the doctor? No. Ida, go see him. It might be serious. I'm no doctor, but throwing up every day is not normal. Hmm. <laughs> Go see him. Well, okay, I'm no doctor, okay, but I think I might him. know what that is. Don't throw up every day, you know. You always exaggerate. Yes, okay. But go see him as soon as possible. Okay. I have to see this Corona. I want you to stay off the streets as much as possible. Never walk around alone. Yes, I know you've told me a hundred times. I am careful. Okay, I'll ease up on you. You be careful. I will. Now go. All right, I've been told we should go. Right, uh, where should we go? What should we? Oh, this this is our car, is it? Okay, where that guy go? Did he just he just walked off? That was a bit strange, really. Um, okay, I think the only thing we can do in this area is is go to our car. So yeah, let's do that. Unless of course there's something we need to do. It will probably tell us. No. Nope. All right, it's a bit more old-fashioned. Here's the map. Okay. Right, so. The shore, that's where I am right now, it's gotta be. So there's the park, and that's the old chapel. That's where the coroner's meant to be, right? Um, okay, so the park is where Apollina should be working, and she might know something about the other missing prostitute. I think I'm following it. <laughs> there was a lot of a lot of talking there, but I think I I think I got the gist of it. What are you doing here? Whoa. Why aren't you at your post? Well, you told me to It's him. Never mind. Do you have any news at least? Yeah. The American is talking to the girl's boss. So, he <laughs> thinks he can move in on my women. There was a comma huh? there, right? Well, my friend, if you ever see him, you may explain things to him. Uh, 
Explain what? Kill him. Use that brute yeah. force of yours, you idiot. There you go. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, boss. I truly miss your brother. He was the smart one. Yeah, I miss him too. Why can't we get him out? Because I'd probably get arrested too, you moron! That's all Skalnik wants anyways. I have a feeling he will blame me for all these murders. Why am I telling you this? Go back to your post. You see the American, you can rough him up. Okay, boss. I better steer clear of the big guy. <laughs> the scrawny looking guy was probably Odokar Kubina. Who can forget that name? Me. Anyways, he was the pimp of the neighborhood. Right. He worked out of this little lingerie shop, which acted as a front, of course. Mm-hmm. He owned a couple of joints in the district, including the cabaret where Ida used to work. I think he never forgave me for stealing Ida from that dive. Okay. Is it safe to come out now? I guess so. Right. Oh, we can go in, can we? Fair enough. Do I want to go in? I'm not honestly sure. Maybe it's best that I don't. Wait. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> this obviously isn't the park, so just out of interest, what happens if we go this way? Do we? I guess we get to see the map screen again, right? Right, hang on. What's this? Is this where we were? Lingerie. Right, yeah, I guess so. I, like, somehow walking from the shore to the park, I, I, I met a diversion, somehow. But yeah, can we actually go to the park now? Yes. Ah, right, okay. And it looks like we're about to meet a, a lady of the night. Is this... Uh, Apollina? Why, hello there. Nice night for a walk, isn't it? It's a little too... German expressionist for my taste. But I guess one could appreciate it. <laughs> Need some company? You must be Apollina, right? Yes. You've heard of me. I have. I have indeed. Do you know Inezka? Yes. Do you want both of us at the same time? We probably want to find her first. Uh, do you know where she is? No, I haven't seen her in a while. When was the last time you saw her? Hey, do you want a Nesca or me? Are you a cop or something? If so, I'll be very disappointed. <laughs> Not exactly. I'm a detective. I was hired by some of your friends. What friends? No, I don't like the way this is going now. <laughs> you must know Ida, Milena, and the late Francisca. Yes, I do. And they are most certainly not my friends. And you're not afraid for your own safety? I have all the protection I need from Roman. Don't you care that some people you know are dying? Actually, no. More business for me. We are just whores to the police anyway. Besides, I have all the protection I need from Roman. Now, would you kindly fuck off? You're scaring potential customers away. Sure, whatever. So, the threesome is off the table? Fair enough, fair enough. Maybe another time. Um, okay. Right. Well, uh, I, I'm here now, so should we go in? I guess. Let's go in. Yeah, let's see what else we can find in the park. Maybe some clues. Oh, hang on. What the hell is this? What? What? What the fuck? What was that meant to be, Inezka? What was that? Some sort of vision? Is this something I missed out by not playing post-mortem? Maybe. I don't know. Right, apparently we can use something. Unfortunately, I don't have anything to use whatsoever, so I guess we need to go find something. What's this? I like this statue. It reminds me of Ida. Eh, forget about that. What was the vision? Right. Okay, let's just sort of scour the area, shall we? Nothing over there? No? Okay. Just uh, just a lot of ruins, apparently. Some park. Right. Yeah, apparently I can use whatever I need to use wherever I want to around this area. What the hell? Hmm. Okay. I have a theory about what that might be, actually. It might be something like a shovel, a spade, something that can dig. Maybe Inezka's, like, buried here or something. Can we go around this at all? No, I don't think we can. Okay, this is actually quite limiting, this area. Let's, um... Let's leave? Maybe let's let's speak to Apollina again. Maybe... Maybe I can talk to her about my vision. I don't know. I thought I told you to fuck off. 
Oh, that's right. Yes, you did. Um, hmm, okay. Uh, hmm, I, I guess I'll have to come back later on when I have something I can use, right? Yeah, okay. Um, well, forget about lingerie, forget about the park. Let's, um, let's go to the old chapel, let's go see this coroner, right? Huh. <laughs> Weird place to meet him, but yeah, okay, sure. Is that a black cat? Yes, it is. Graveyards. Okay, is, hang on. That seems to be the only way in, so let's go in this direction, shall we? Yeah, I can't go to the right, can't go to the left. Let's just go inside. Wow, alright. Ooh, bodies? Are these other prostitutes? In nomine Patris, Filii, Spiritus Sancti. That's nice of you. Uh, right. Okay, there is more. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, uh, sort of half morgue, half barn by the looks of it. This place had the metallic smell of blood and the stench of rotting flesh. This old chapel had been converted into an autopsy room. Now blood dyed its floor. Hello, Mr. Corona. My name's Gus McPherson. I'm a detective that was hired to help my client. Hello? Sir? Hello? Is he deaf? <laughs> What the- Not quite. What are you doing here? I thought I'd lock the door. So where is my cone? Your cone? Oh, oh. What are you trying to do? Give me a heart attack? <laughs> uh, sorry, Mr. Corona. Who are you and how do you know my name? Like I said earlier, I'm Detective McPherson. Inspector Skalnik told me that I could ask you a few questions. If Skalnik says it's okay, then it's okay. Is it the cone that he wanted to keep a surprise? Maybe. All right, questions. Can you walk me through your observations of this victim? Okay. Ah, the cause of death is like the others. The cut to the throat. It can't be the multiple stab wounds or the evisceration itself? No, I'm pretty sure of that. Hmm. What makes you so sure? The one before her. The one we found in the park. She was killed in the same spot she was found. Uh. It was clear that it was the wound to her throat that killed her. The rest was probably done after. And how did you come to that conclusion? Because not much blood was coming from the other wounds. The heart was still beating when the throat was cut. I could tell by the amount of blood that had poured from the throat wound. Okay. So you weren't sure about the cause of death until you saw the victim in the park? Well, I had my doubts, but when I saw her, yes, she made things more clear. And the same killer would use the same brutal techniques. Precisely. But is it... Is it even possible that it's the same killer? Or maybe it's some sort of copycat killer in Chicago? Because, uh, yeah, there's obviously some similarities. Does the victim in the park have any other differences from the rest of the victims? Yes, the cut to her neck indicates an attack from behind. The rest, including this one, were attacked from the front. If only I had the other body, I could show you the difference. That's okay. Really, I trust your judgment. You don't have the body, but maybe you have a file on the victim from the park? Sure. I think the I see it. The man who was supposed to come and get the file never showed up. What man? Skalnik's errand boy. Hmm. He comes to get the files I make for each victim. He still hasn't come to get the one from the park. That's okay, I can ah, get I see. it. Well, I'll take Inspector yeah. Scott if I don't mind. <laughs> no, I don't really care. Fair enough. <laughs> that, that works for me. Where do you keep your files? In my safe over there. I can never remember my combination, so I wrote it on a piece of paper. You know, I think I lost it somewhere. Jesus Christ. <laughs> These people are just hopeless. What happened to your hearing, if you don't mind my asking? It happened in the Great War. I was a medical aide. Now we get the wounded from the trenches to the temporary hospital. One day we saw a wounded soldier in no man's land. We rushed to him, and a mortar shell exploded on my partner. I survived, but with hardly any hearing left. So that's where you got your experience? Yeah, mostly. Ironically, the war ended three weeks after the shell exploded. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you get back to it. So the file is in the safe. Where's the safe? And and what what are those pieces of paper next to the body? Can we have a look? I guess so. 
Not a pretty sight. Ooh. Poor doll. She never saw it coming. No. Yeah, there you go. The slice of the throat. The cut to her throat is very deep. It was definitely a frontal assault. Any opinion on this one? It looks like the first try at the throat missed. Hmm. So he's clumsy, is he? <laughs> Not very precise. Is that it? I think that might be it. Okay, but these? In every body, there's a puzzle waiting to be solved. Ah. And a skeleton. That's it? In every body. That's it, okay. There's a puzzle waiting to be solved. Right, and presumably I can't use the bowl or the candles or anything like that. Okay, um, what about on the, yeah, the other table, the other body? I hate this part of my job. Come on, it's still part of your job. I hate this part of my job. No, okay, I guess I hate it that much. Um, I guess we're kind of done. <laughs> right, okay, so there's a safe, hang on, there's a safe around here somewhere. I don't think that's a safe, I think that's a sink. These were installed recently. Yeah. I, uh, I can see that. Does look a bit out of place, doesn't it? Okay, we've, uh, hang on, there's something over here, apparently. Around these boxes of hay and straw, or whatever the hell it is. Right, okay. Uh, that's a strange looking clock. 74821536. That's the piece of paper with the save combination? Okay. Alright, yeah, let's have a look at this piece of paper. I, I don't think this is the one we're going to be using in the park, but, you know, let's have a better look at it. I just want to make sure there's nothing on the other side of it, actually. No, okay. Um, I'm just going to write this down, just so it's easier for me to reference, essentially. Seven, four, eight, two, one, five, three, six. Okay. Right, there you go. Now, we just need to find the damn safe. Well, it's not here. Um, is that a door over there? I, yeah, I think it is, but I can't use it. Over here? No. At the far end? Possibly. Uh, maybe. What have we got here? Oh, this is it! This is- oh, right, this is- <laughs> This is where you're hiding your safe. Oh, Christ. Oh, it's never bloody easy, is it? Uh, right, so hang on, I just, just want to make sure we've got, you know, like, the right amount here, so... What is it? Okay, so there's eight... Yeah, eight numbers, and there's eight little blocks that I need to put in, in a certain way, and then, I guess, use this. Yeah, it's not working right now, that isn't the combination. But the combination should be 74821536, but what the... What, what does that mean, really? Is that a three? Where does three go? Three, three's the second from last, but then none of it, none of these other ones really look like one, two, four, five, six, or anything like that. Well, that could be two, I guess. Is, is it them reversed or something? Is that one? Is that two? Is that three? Is there one that looks a bit like a four? There's a plus symbol. <laughs> An open book? I. Someone's playing snake on an old Nokia phone. I don't really know what I'm looking at here. Um. Let's see, let's see, uh... Did I make- hang on, give me a sec. Okay, so we can't go that way. We can't go this way either, no, okay, there's nothing... No, uh, no, nothing I want to have a look at around here, apart from this area, this safe. Let's go back to the area where I picked up the card, because I actually kind of pointed it out without realizing it, but there was something odd about that clock, and I think I've actually seen the thing that looks like a three on that clock. Yes, yes I did, okay, so... Well, presumably this is a, a normal clock, even though it doesn't look like it's working properly. So the three actually might be three. That's six. That's nine, and that's... That's twelve. Maybe. Okay, again, I'm just gonna- I'm just gonna note this down as well. Okay, uh... Well, I- I- I, I think I might know what the last two numbers of the combination look like. I think, yeah. Yeah, the one that looked like a six, I think I did see the block over there. Let me just... Try this out. Okay. Oh, it, it saves my progress. That's quite nice. Um, okay, so let's put that one back down, ideally. Now, six. Six should be this one, for some reason. Why is that six? I don't know, but apparently it's six. Right, I've also got 
written down 9 and 12, but of course there's no 9 or 12 that we need to put in the combination, so... Right, so, okay, why is this 3? 1, 2, 3, 4... Mm. Okay, uh, I, was, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd count the amount of strokes, you know, so... I don't know, why is this 6? One, two, three, four, five, six. That kind of makes sense, I guess, but th that doesn't make sense on this one because it's one, two, three, four. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, hmm. I guess I could just have a bash at it, you know? <laughs> Maybe like I did with my grandfather's chest, and who knows? I might be able to figure it out without figuring it out. How does the safe work? Yeah. Huh? What? <laughs> What did you say? Grab your cone. That's it. <laughs> How does the safe work? Each number is represented by a symbol. Yes. And now the trick is, uh, oh, what was it again? Oh, damn. I don't remember. <sighs> he doesn't remember. So if I'm not around, how the hell does he ever get this file? He probably never does. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. I, I think I might be asking for help on this one. I might figure it out before I, uh, you know, upload this video or something. But um, I'm just going to give you a, a quick look at all of these blocks. And if you can figure out some sort of pattern uh, as to what numbers they might represent, that would be absolutely fantastic. That one looks a little bit like 12, so I'm thinking that might be a, quite a high number, but I'm not sure. It looks like an 8 turn sideways. <sighs> Is that a 5? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Right, thank you very much for watching part 3 of Still Life. I will keep experimenting and maybe I'll find a solution. If not, I might be relying on you in the comments. Thank you very much. See you next time. Now I think... If I just spin this again? There we go! Right, okay. <laughs> this is a waste of your time. I think you've just convinced me to take the case. Hmm. Really? Just to spite you. You should stick with what you know. I don't like this guy. What is it with men in directions? <sighs> take this map, it'll help you. We just want to figure shit out on our own. The scrawny looking guy was probably Odokar Kubina. Who can forget that name? Me. Do you know Inezka? Uh, yes. Do you want both of us at the same time? So where is my cone? Your cone? Oh. Hey, oh. What are you trying to do? <laughs> Give me a heart attack? You know, I think I lost it somewhere. Jesus Christ. <laughs> These people are just hopeless. The other body. I hate this part of my job. Come on. It's still part of your job. I hate this part of my job. No, okay. I guess I hate it that much. Oh, it's never bloody easy, is it?